Hi and welcome to the second part of the water distortion in UMG tutorial. So, I went ahead and added some elements to this interface because this isn't a tutorial about making interface and I didn't want to waste your time with it. I've inserted the title and two buttons and the canvas panel is set up to fill both horizontally and vertically the overlay widget and everything inside the retainer box. Now I'll tell you why we're using a retainer box. The retainer box was created for optimization. Here you have the phasing. What the phasing does is to decide which frame this retainer box will be rendered. So what 0 and 1 means is at each one frame, render on the frame 0. So basically this is rendering every frame. If your game is running at 60 FPS, it will be rendering 60 FPS this interface. Now, if you get this and put it to like 30, it will render on frame 0 of each 30 frames. Uh, to show you, I have to add this UMG in my game. So here is my level, I'll let it, it's blueprint. If you hold P and click, you add begin play node, just a shortcut. So create widget, tutorial, water menu, on in player, player controller, to see it we have to add it to the screen, you can use any of these, viewport will add to all players and player screen will add only to a specific player, and then I'll set the input mode to UI only, that will make me able to click and not get the mouse locked in the screen target has to be player control. Alright, file, save this, now if I hit play, you can see it's stuttering, but it's not some bug or performance, it's that option that I set of rendering each 30 frames, so each 30 frames that pass, it renders one frame in the retainer box, that's why it's used for optimization. So, only to show you, it's a very extreme example, but you could, like, uh, at each 3 frames, render once. So it's almost smooth, and it's much lighter on the CPU. Well, that's the part of optimization. Another thing that, that comes as a bonus with the retainer box is that it renders in a texture. So if it renders in a texture, you can add a material to this texture to give some effects to it. So that's how you add post-processing to UMG. You put everything you want to post-process inside the retainer box and add a material to it. That's what we'll do now. So I'll create the material to do the post-processing. I'll already create a material instance, because probably I'll need it later. In this material, the first thing we have to do is the same we did with the background material. The material domain has to be user interface. Now, how I take the texture of the UMG and add it inside there? Here in the retainer box you have texture parameter. So take this name and create a texture parameter with the same name. For that, I'll hold key T, convert to parameter and rename it. Just for testing, I'll multiply it by some color. Uh, I'll hold 3 to create a float 3 node, make it red, and multiply it by the texture color. You have to give it some default texture, or else it will give an error. Unreal has, if you set this to show engine content, Unreal has a default texture. It uses the tutorials and everything. It's a green here. This scales texture, I think. And that's it. That, that will be my default texture. A real will automatically change it for the UMG texture. Now, so here am I to it here. Water just start. You can't see the effect here, so you must hit play to see it. You can see the material is working. So now anything we do inside that material will affect our UMG. How to do the distortion effect? Here is finally the fun part. So first we need the normal that Unreal gives us for water. Uh, parameter. Normal. I'll make it a parameter 
because maybe I want to change it later. Type water. Here we have the texture, the tea water in, and the water in. Both, let me see, just be sure. No. This tea water in comes with starter content. If you didn't start your project with starter content, you can use this water in. So, that's most probably the case for many projects. So, I'll use the water in. Now we get, we have this normal and we'll distort the texture. To distort the texture, you must distort its coordinates. So I'll hold U and click to create a texture coordinate and add. I'll give an example of why this works. I'll create a, a float here and leave it at 0.5. Texture coordinates go from 0 to 1. If I add 1 to this texture coordinate, it will do a full loop. I'll do it, just to show. So here's my texture coordinate, I'll put it in the texture, and you can see the texture didn't change at all. That's because I made, I offset the texture one unit in X and in Y. Since the coordinates go from 0 to 1, that's like a full loop in the texture, and you can't spot the difference. Now, if I make it 0.5, you can see the texture is 0.5 right and 0.5 down. So. To make the distortion effect, we will add values from the normal to the coordinates, and that will distort the texture. I'll append these values to make it a flow 2, as the coordinates are flow 2 values. Blue is the less changing color in a, in a normal like this, a tangent space normal. So we'll use red and green, that are the colors that mostly change with the direction of the normal. I'll remove the, the red color. Now you can see the texture got indistinguishable. That's because we are distorting from these values multiplied by 1. So if a value here of red is 1, it takes the value of offset 1. It goes all around the texture to get a value. So it's a very big distortion. We don't want that. We want to control how much distortion we do. And we want to start with a small value. So I'll multiply this amount of distortion for a scalar, so I can control it in a material instance later. Now my distortion is zero, so it has no effect. I'll do it like 0.05. So it's like 5% of the texture moving around. You can see it's already affecting the texture. It has some distortion. To see it better, we will need it. We need to move this texture with a panner. So it animates like moving water. So I hold P to create a banner, connect its output to the input in the normal UVs, create a time node. I'll connect the time node to the banner time. I'll create a coordinates node and use styling just like in the water cost its material. So this way I can control how big the texture is in X and Y. And for the speed, I'll also create two vectors, two scalars, sorry. And it will be speed X and speed Y. And insert them in the speed. So I can control the speed of the panning. <coughs> sorry. So I can control the speed of the panning with these two values. Also the direction. This is too fast for me as default, so I'll put it in 0.2. <clears throat> Sorry again. Okay, I believe that's very good. So you can see we already have the effect of water going above the texture. And that's it, really. It's it's ready. We now have to apply the material instance. Oh, we already did. The material instance is on the retainer box. We only have to set up the material instance to to our taste. So I'll leave the material instance open here in some, somewhere. Where it is? Where is it? Where is it? Here. So I'll leave it open here. And play in a new window. Alright. We have the effect, but it's too fast and too strong. I'll leave this window on the left side of my screen and this one on the right side and my material instance here on the left. 
Okay, so now I can click it without losing sight of the the other window. Now let's set up this. I'll change speed for 0.1 and 0.1 in Y also, and my distortion amount to 0 0.01. Alright, much better, much better, much better. Now the speed, it's it's still too fast for me, so maybe 0 0.05 next, and Y 0 0.02. Better. I wanna tile this texture less, so the distortion, the waves are bigger. To make it tile less, you insert values smaller than one. Oh, that's cool for me. And as you can see, buttons still work. So that's it guys. I hope you liked this tutorial. Subscribe, like this video, and this year I'm really inspired to do Unreal tutorials. So I swear to you, it's worth subscribing now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.